hello and uh, welcome to the weaving shed which is the home of Vic Stotter's loom. Um, I've been working on a Varafelder, some of you might have been watching it already about how it's coming on and um, I thought you might like to come inside and have a look and see what's happening. Follow me into the shed. So here we are then at the warp weighted loom. This is, um, I'm just going to show you a little bit about it. The top beam, where the warps are attached and the weave is rolled up as you go along. There are two rows of warps making up to front and back warps. And in a second we'll see the heddle bar which holds the heddles which are enclosing the back warps. And the heddle bar is supported on the little supports on the sides, which is a little fork at the ends, so that when the bar is moved to the outer fork, it pulls the back warps through to the front. At the bottom of the warps are the weights. These keep the warps under tension. So the tension changes depending on the size of weights to the number of warps attached. Now to the weaving of the Varafelder itself. The Varafelder is made from two things. The warp, which in this case is Hebridean two-ply wool. And the staples or togs, which are from raw Hebridean sheep fleece. The staple has to be prepared by pulling it from the fleece to get the long lock and then carding the fluffy end to reduce it to a more usable thickness. And you can see here's one that's been prepared already. The weft is the yarn going across the loom and this locks the staples in place. The weft is made into a skein of yarn called an udu. Some weavers use a shuttle or a stick. I'm now going to pull the bar out onto the fork to change the shed. The shed is where the weft passes through. It has to be cleared to make sure all the warps are in their correct positions. You can quite clearly see where the back warps have been pulled through to the front by the heddles on the left hand side. On to the exciting bit. I've brushed upwards with my fingers to expose bare patches of weaving where I'm going to place more staples. I choose a front warp and with the nice long staple, I pass it under the warp and wrap it round once. I then skip a couple of warps, depending on the length of the staple, and pass it under another warp once, not wrapping it this time. With shorter staples it may not be possible, so I will only do the one wrap to lock it into place. So I carry on across the whole weave to fill up all the gaps using generally 13 to 15 staples each time. Having done that, I now have to pass the weft through the shed to lock all the staples into the weave. The weft must be pulled across too tight as it needs to wrap around the staples and the warp. So I use my fingers as a guide to make the weft hang down, often referred to as a smile. Now I'm moving the heddle bar back to its resting position on the support. This changes the shed by returning the back warps to their normal position. 
This is my weaving sword, which I'm going to use to beat or push the weft firmly into place, locking in the staples. They can be made of wood or metal like this one and all sorts of shapes and sizes. I prefer my wooden one. I slide it in between the warps and push the weft up quite firmly. Then repeating this across the weave, trying to keep the beating even. Not an easy thing to do. So I would make two to three passes, i.e. passing the weft, changing the sheds and beating between each layer of staples until you reach the desired length. And basically that's all there is to it. This has been going off quite a few months, to be absolutely honest with you. Um, it is a very slow process. The um, just preparing the staples themselves is a very long process. I hope you enjoyed your visit to um, the Weaving Shed and Vic Stotter's Loom. Um, if you're interested in anything, you can find uh, me on Etsy. Um, the Etsy shop has got a few Viking-y type things on there. The Barry Felder won't be on there, uh, but you never know. And thank you for watching. <laughs>